In this lecture, we're going to learn about navigation in SAP GUI. Now, SAP has now two parts, especially with S4 HANA. We have Fiori apps, and the second one we have is the GUI screen. In this video, we're going to learn about G GUI only, and I will create a separate video for the Fiori apps. Now, this GUI, that stands for the Graphical User Interface. Some people also call it GUI, some people call it GUI, both are correct. So we'll just call, for now we'll call it um, GUI. So let us me log into the screen and I will show you how we can navigate to the GUI. Once you get access to the SAP system, you will see a SAP logon icon. So when you double click on it, it will open a login screen. You can see this screen and again you will see your SAP system here. In real time environment, you will see different system. For example, one system for development, one for testing, one for production. But this is a just like a play system for learning purpose. We're just seeing one system here. Then you double click on this first entry and here you will see one more screen where you need to enter your login ID and password to log in into the system. So I remember my ID and password, so I will use that for now. And press enter. So this is the home page of the GUI screen. So I will talk about all the important parts of this screen, but as we go ahead with this training, you will learn more in depth about the different options available in the GUI screen. So first of all, we'll talk about the command bar. This here you can see my cursor is, I can type something here, for example. So here you can directly enter a transaction code um, or I can, there are different way to do it or you can navigate into this menu password. For example, if I'm working in ST, I can go to logistics and then I can go to sales and distribution, sales and order and I can double click on VA01 create to create an order. Or I can here on the command bar, I can directly type VA01 to open a create sales order screen. So this is how this command bar is used. So along with the time with some experience, you will get to remember this transaction course automatically. Then you can directly type in here. But for now, if you're a beginner, you can just directly go to the menu path and select it. So this is for the front screen that you can see here is that that is for basically the front end you can call it. Now with S4 HANA, we have, as I said before, we have Fiori apps and we have this GUI. So for end users, mainly the Fiori apps are used, but for consultant level, super user level or technical consultant level, we use the GUI screen. Now within the GUI screen, this is the front end where you can see all the different options, for example, to create an order, to create a, here you can see inquiry. And if I'm working in the MM module, I can also see under material management, purchasing, I can see purchase order, create change screen and all that. So these are basically, this screen will allow you to select different options with regards to creating a transaction, changing a transaction, or it can be master data, create and change screen. But when you talk about customizing, then you need to go to a transition code called SPRO. You can type in the command bar over there and press enter, then click on SAP reference IMG. So this screen is for customizing only. So whenever you need to do, do some changing in the customizing, then you will come to this screen. For example, if you need, if I'm working in say, um, say if I'm working in um, ST module, so let me go to ST sales and distribution. And here you can see under sales, sales document, sales document header, defined sales document type. So here I can customize different types of sales order and I can do different settings. And as we go along, we will learn different settings about the customizing later on, whether it is ST or MM, whatever course you're enrolled in. But this is where you do your customizing. So if I go back, this is the back button, again back, 
I'll reach the home screen. So this is for the front end and the back end. Now I'll talk about some other important settings that are useful for you as a beginner. So let me close this screen. Now this is your favorite here. In favorite, I have already have I created some favorites here, but I'll show you how you can create favorites yourself. I can right click on the favorite. So I have two options. Either I can insert a folder first and within the folder I can create different enter different transaction codes or I can directly enter enter transaction code here. But for now, let me click click on the insert folder. Let's say I'm creating a folder for purchase order. So this is this will be my shortcut uh, for some transition that I used on a day to day basis. So you can see this folder here. Then again, I can right click on this folder and I can now insert transaction. So I know that transaction code for ME is ME21N to create an order. I can enter the code. I can press enter. You can see that entry here. I can again right click on it. I can enter one more transaction. For example, I can say <clears throat> MM01, for example, to create a material as well. So the same way I can create multiple folders, one for purchase order, one for sales order, one for master data, for example, and I can enter different codes into that one. I can also drag and drop any transaction here. For example, if I accidentally put MM01 here, I can drag and drop to this screen or I can right click on it and I can delete it as well. Delete favorite, for example. And also I can drag and drop from here from the main favorite screen to the folder. You can see I can do that as well. You can see now MM01 is a part of this folder purchase order. So this is a uh, this is for the favorites. Now I have already created a, another video where I have explained in detail how you can um, down, you can download and upload uh, favorites. For example, if I have a big list of favorites, I'm working in a company now. I got another job, so I can download all my favorites from here. I go to the new job or a new system or a new server, and I can upload my favorites from that file that I downloaded from here. So I'll paste the link in the description box, which you can check later on. So this is my favorite. Then I'll show you um, how we can do some Im other important settings that is helpful when you navigate to the SAP GUI screen. One of the important settings is you need to go to extras and settings and make sure this display technical name is there. If this is not ticked, for example, if I untick this, and it won't show you for example here you can see you won't see the transaction code here you will you will only see the description of that transaction for example here you can only see create purchase order but not the t code i can go back i can tick that box again and now if i open it i can see transaction code and the description so uh, recommended setting is always turn it on. Then we have some other settings that I'll show you. If you click on this little icon, which is the customize local layout and click on options. Again, there are so many settings here, but I'm only talking about the important ones. So here you can see there are different options here. First, I'll show you how you can change theme. So you can see I have this theme activated, which is called blue crystal. And there's so many other themes, some with the uh, high contrast, black and white and all that. So for example, I want, I would like to check what this quartz theme is. So I can select that and I can say apply and then okay. To see the new, uh, to see the new changes, you need to open a new screen. So you can click on this little create new window icon and then you will see this is my new screen right again if you don't like it then you need to revert back to the old setting so again here you can see in this screen that setting box is here on the top right hand side options and i can go back to the blue crystal theme i can say apply and say okay and i need to open one more screen here you can see the little icon 
for the new GUI window. So here's my old theme is back. Um, then I can go back into the settings again. And then I'll show you how you can change fonts. You can click on this font setting here. You can see my font setting is 14. I can, I can click on select. And here I can select the, for example, font type, font style and font size. For example, I would like to have bigger fonts. I can say 16 I want, then I can click on OK and always select this proportional font. This is what I recommend. And then I can click on apply. I can say OK. Now to display the changes, you can, you need to open a new screen. I will open a new screen. You can see now fonts are bigger. So if I want to reverse the, the last change, I can go back. I can change it to, it was 17 last time. So I'll change it to 13 and I can say, okay, apply. Okay. And then open a new screen to see the changes. So that's my old setting. Then the other important setting is go to options again. Here you will see um, under interaction design, you will see visualiz visualization one. If I click on it, make sure you have selected these two tick box. So basically what they're doing is if they are selected, let me show you, let me select them and I can click on apply and okay. For example, when you are inside a transaction or any master data transaction, for example, if I go to uh, open a sales order, for example, sales order, purchase order, anything. Let me, let me find a sales order. So this is my sales order screen. Now, in most of the transactions, you will see there are drop downs for such boxes. For example, here I can say drop down is for billing block. This is the drop down. You can see zero zero means check uh, check day rate. Zero one is calculation missing. If that tick box that I've shown you before this screen, if it is not ticked, you won't see the this key code like zero 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 one. You won't see. You will only see the description. So same with here. If I show you the delivery block, you will see the number and the description, the code and the description. So make sure you have ticked that box uh, under the visualization one so that you see both. Um, apart from this, let me close this screen. Apart from this, you can also you also have the option um, to change the colors. There are different colors available. Um, I have already created a separate video for that and I'll paste a link in the description that you can watch to how we can change the color of the screen. Now this color changing is very, very helpful when you work in the real time environment where you have a development system, you have a testing system, you have a production system. So ideally you should have three different colors selected for these three systems so that Whenever you look at a screen, whenever you're working on a screen, you will immediately know that this is test, this is production because by mistake, you should not be doing any changes directly in the production system. So by looking at the color or the color coding, you can call it, you will see the color and you will immediately know that this is a testing system. This is a production system. So that's helpful. And um, other settings you can see this little icon you can see again that I used to open a new screen. I can click on it. I can keep opening new screen and the maximum limit is six. So you can open maximum six screen and work on six different screen at the same time. And when, when you are inside a transaction, let me open a transaction. So when you're inside a transaction, if you want to go back to the main screen, or the home page you can click on this back arrow sometimes you need to click on the back arrow maybe more than once for example if i click on back arrow one two times or there are different ways to do it 
or if I go back again, if I click on this um, cancel one, it will do the same. But sometimes this cancel one will immediately jump out of it. For example, let me go back to this one and show you the yellow one. For example, this one is exit. If I click on exit, it will straight away go to the home screen. Or there's another way to do it. For example, if I'm into this screen again, you can type a code in the selection screen as slash n. It will again jump to the directly the, the home screen. So there are different ways to do uh, the same thing. Um, I think that's all for this. And one last thing I would like to tell you, if you want to log off or if you want to close this session, then again, there are different ways to do it. For example, you can click on this little icon on the, on the top right hand side. For example, if I click on it, it will close one screen. Now this is my other screen because I opened, you can see I opened, I have three screens still open or I can click on this uh, yellow one and it will do the same thing. This is my other screen that I had before. I can now click on this cross again and this is the last screen, I guess. So when you're in the last screen, when you click, when you cl try to close it, it will ask you whether you want to log off or not. This is one way to do it. There's another way to do it. For example, um, I, at the moment I got two screens open. If, if you have more than one screen open, if you type in here slash n e x as a transition code, it and press enter, it will close all the screen. Even it will not ask you whether you want to log off or not. And this, even if you were creating any data, you did not save your data, it will not prompt you to save it. It will immediately close it all the screen and will kick you off from the system. For example, if let me show you, for example, if I'm into a sales order screen or, or a purchase order screen and I was doing something, uh, let's say I have changed the quantity here to two and press enter. I did, I have not saved my data, but if I come here and click on slash and EX, press enter, it will kick you out of the SAP screen. So make sure when you use slash and EX, then you have saved your data. So that's all about the SAP GUI navigation. In the next video, I'll talk about the Fiori app application. So thank you for watching for this video. I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.